Hello, well it's 5.30 in the morning and I've just arrived at the RSPB Reserve at Snettersham in North Norfolk. This is a vast area of lagoons and tidal mudflats, shingle beaches and salt marsh and the reserve itself overlooks the humongous mudflats of the Wash which of course is an internationally important area that provides refuge for mind-boggling numbers of wildfowl and waders. Well, my aim this morning, with a bit of luck, is to photograph the famous Whirling Wader Spectacular from a particular vantage point inside the reserve. So now all I've got to do is to get all my kit together. I've got a mile and a half walk in the dark through the reserve to that special vantage point and then I keep fingers crossed and hope the birds do their thing. A winter visit to Snettersham when there's a particularly high tide offers an avian spectacle that rivals any in the world. The wash of course is a ridiculously vast area of mud and the tide pushes the waders within photographic range only when the tide is at its highest. So timing your visit is critical. The challenge here is not to try and photograph everything. It's a bit overwhelming. If you do that and snap here and snap there, you're not really going to get anything unless you're really lucky. The obvious shot is the big clouds and the murmurations, the, the fantastic shapes that they make, like starling murmurations. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a long lens. I've got a 600mm lens with a 1.4 converter, and I'm going to focus tight shots to try and get those spectacular dense flocks and all the beautiful shapes and patterns of the flocks. So it shows how densely packed they are. So I'm going to do that and nothing else and hope for the best. <laughs> Well, the tide rose surprisingly quickly and pretty soon the birds I'd seen standing on the mud miles away in the distance were rapidly moving nearer and every so often they took to the air. It actually got quite busy during the course of the morning with bird watchers and photographers. Now normally I shy away from crowds but it was alright because we all spread out along the waterfront and we all had front row seats. One person taking up more space than most was my old mate and co-conspirator, wildlife photographer Paul Goldstein, who's actually better known for his stunning images of African wildlife. And he's been running wildlife photography workshops here at Snettersham every weekend for the past couple of months. And he had, in characteristic Goldstein style, more than a few things to say about photography and Snettersham. To get great photos, you've got to go to the same place time and time and time again. Yesterday was a bit gloomy. It was the sort of Leonard Cohen uh, of way durations. However, uh, it was still beautiful shapes and we had the hide to ourselves. This morning, a few more people and a peregrine falcon has been carving into them trying to get some breakfast. Always different, different skies. It's like the really good game areas. I mean, I, can, I would stop anywhere in the world to see this. It is genuinely up there with the best of the yes, best it is. wildlife spectacle. I would say in the UK it's the number one bird spectacle. I really would. Um, I haven't seen better but there are better birders like there are better photographers than me certainly. I think I found one once uh, but seriously. He's standing behind the camera. Yeah, yes of course how silly. I was, what I was surprised about this morning was photographically there's so many different shots to get. Yeah. I was thinking mm. you know you get the shapes the clouds but mm. actually there's well, 18 different things you can do. Yes, there really are. And uh, well, you rather cherry picked it this morning because this morning you had the moon, you had the clouds, you had good visibility, you had good light. You didn't have too many people here. Uh, and most importantly, the same as anything, it's like when you're on the banks of the, of the Mara or the Talic River and there's, uh, uh, I don't know, about 12,000 ruminants about to cross. What you mustn't do is say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Is stick with one camera, say, I'm just going to go wide angle. Uh, and you will miss some things. When you've got 80,000 birds, of course you're going to miss things, but that way you're more likely to get some great stuff. Or you say, I'm just going the big dog, I'm going to close in and hope I can get some action. So yeah. Snettersham, you've been here to see 20, this 25 20, 30, times. 30, 25 yeah. times? Yeah, I think and so. And do you think you've got a good shot? Um, I think you can be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, much as I hate to admit it, he had taken some absolute stonkers. Here are a few of my favourites, taken by Paul, 
over the past few months. Ending there with yours truly in seventh heaven. With a, with a situation like this, you've been here 20, 25 times. You've taken maybe tens of thousands of pictures. Will you come back again next year? Yeah, you definitely. you've done this or can you still get something different? I, I think uh, it's, a, it's a magnificent question, a very good question, unusual for you, uh, that um, the really great places, and everyone has them. I mean, with you, if the, why do you keep going back to Baja? It's, it's, it's not just because it's your, your job and your life and your, your profession. It's because you know there could always be that moment. And it, just taking the camera aside, just the noise of these birds is... And more coming. Uh, beautifully choreographed there. Just the it noise of them. It is a fantastic them. sound, isn't you it? You just, it, it's, it's magnificent and you just don't know. I was discussing with someone 10 minutes ago, how could you get that? There's no such thing as a perfect photograph. Imagine a peregrine falcon. I have a photograph of a falcon closing in on a single knot. One moment it's silhouette, then it's a bit of a lump as it grabs it. That's never, that's going to a three out of 10 at best. But imagine a falcon carving through only 50 meters from you. And there's, I don't know, 200 birds in the shot, but you can see the outline in amongst them. There's, with this amount of players. Oh, they're in, off again, look this amount of players in the cast you know you've always got that opportunity look at this oh i'm gonna to have to photograph this and then the most incredible thing happened everything took off from the mudflats and flew right over our heads and so it was time to run for the brand new knots landing hide great name that which overlooks one of the many so-called pits and a particular bank where we hoped all or at least many of the birds might land and sure enough, that's exactly where they went. Well, that's it. I'm back in the car already. It's just coming up to 10 o'clock. So I've been gone a grand total of four hours. That's it. But it was amazing. I'm so glad I came. The weather was pretty good. The rain held off. Um, it wasn't fantastic light, but it was perfectly workable. And there were staggering numbers of birds. I bumped into another friend of mine out on the reserve there, and he actually used to count the birds on the wash professionally. So he knows what he's talking about. And he estimated, as a very rough guesstimate, that there were somewhere between 50,000 and 80,000 knot altogether. And on top of that, there were thousands of oyster catchers and goodness knows how many thousands of other waders and, and wildfowl. It really is truly a world spectacle. Um, photographically, I'm not sure how I did. I took just over 2,000 pictures altogether. Um, I've had a look on the back of the camera. It looks like there's some quite nice ones. I'll go and have a look properly in a minute. I, I concentrated, as I said at the beginning, with the long 600mm lens, um, trying to get tight shots. I didn't want to run around and panic and try and capture everything. So a lot will look similar. But what I'll do now is I'll go back home and I'll sort through them properly. And I'll put to together a little slideshow for you just to show you the best of the morning. But do bear in mind that these were all taken in, I mean, the actual shooting time was no more than two hours. So what I'm gonna show you is all taken in two hours and hopefully, fingers crossed, if there are some good ones among them, it will demonstrate what you can achieve with a, with a good morning at Snettisham. So thanks very much for watching and here's that little slideshow of my favorites from this morning.